Top of the morning to you. On this Friday morning, 30th of July, 2021, you might be saying, what is that? If you haven't been tuning in to Joe's show for the past couple of days, well, the boss man uh, took some time Tom off with his family to go uh, do some recreating. So I hope he's uh, got a, getting a, a good opportunity to clear his mind and just enjoy that family time. What you got in his stead is the Colorado Front Range crew, Jason, and this is Brian filling in for the boss man uh, for this third day. I hope everyone had a good week so far. Yay, we made it to Friday. We're almost through the week. Uh, Patriot Radio News Hour, toll free, 800-951-0592, Patriot's website, allamericangold.com. You longtime, loyal, and satisfied customers and listeners uh, knew all about that, so uh, pardon the pardon the redundancy. Just got to get the business out of the way. So, uh, Jason, what do we got going on today? Man, uh, I haven't found a special. Uh, it was like it's interesting. Uh, Joe's gone Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I uh, didn't find a really good special to put on the air Wednesday. Thursday, I had all kinds of stuff. Uh, if you didn't hear the afternoon show yesterday, we had something that was just on just yesterday. It sold out in a couple of segments. Um, we had uh, man, we had that silver set yesterday, and we had uh, five dollar Indians. And we had twenty dollar libs on special and. Uh, to this point, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll check, and maybe I'll have you uh, check in with Arlene on a text or two, uh, Brian. But I, I don't think we don't have anything yet today. So I mean, you you really got to listen to these shows uh, if you want to capitalize in on some cheap gold and silver. Uh, regardless, we always sell gold and silver. I've always got a few things in the vault here. Uh, you can always order, and we can call you in when things ship. Uh, the number is eight hundred nine five one. 0592 to be uh, a customer of the Patriot Trading Group. Whether you be an old customer or somebody brand new, we will take care of it. Talk to you about the things you need to, you know, any questions or concerns, uh, we'll, we'll handle all of that. Also, uh, you simply have to have the number, 800 951 Today, Brian, uh, I'd like to talk, and it's been a while since I've just uh, you know, stuck with kind of a timeline of where central banking really started and how it's it's ingrained into every piece of American history. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through kind of a nice uh, slow but sure sure reasons how this how this how did this happen? Why is it so uh, relevant? Uh, we talk about the the new world order, the Illuminati, all the shows on on this station, 1360 KHNC. Uh, I'm sure uh, people at uh, in Arizona, at 1010. Not the same station as ours, but they, uh, they, they, they have a lot, a lot of like-minded people. You know, these, these nameless, faceless globalists that we, we, that we hear all the time. I'm going to talk about some of them. I want to talk about uh, how uh, the system of banking, central banking, uh, where it started, how did it get to where it is today, and why it's so dangerous, and why it needs to be eliminated. And uh, the systems they've built, the control that's in place, and once you you know when you understand where it came from and how it, it developed, uh, you know nine eleven being an inside job, coronavirus being a hoax at least as far as the way it's presented to the American people in the world, you start to understand how, why these things are possible and why they are facts. And uh, Brian, you've you've heard many of these stories before, but I'll I think it'll be uh, it'll be interesting for the people that are they have a lot of new listeners. That really haven't heard this. I've been, I really uh, slowly kind of did a little bit of a history, uh, my version of it from from my materials, my studies, and uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go essentially from almost the time of Christ all the way to, to today. Uh, I'm going to cover mostly American history, though, because what really matters is is our sovereign nation and trying to regain our sovereign nation. And so that uh, Brian, when you you and I go to work, we keep the labors of our day in our pocket. And the government stays out of it, you know, and, and why that's just not the case anymore, Brian. Used to be very highly protected, very highly regarded. That was off limits. Uh, like cert certain amendments, you were not even to get near the fringe. Don't even talk about stomping on the in the middle of it. Don't even get near the, the edges of it. Uh, but uh, cent central banks and the struggles uh, that have been going on all along. And uh, you could say back to the days in the temple when Jesus fashioned a, a whip and uh, slapped the snot out of him for 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 uh, doing exchanging in the in the temple of all places. Yeah, I mean, Jesus sat down with the tax collector and and had dinner with him. Uh, to the criticism of those around him, it's like why you know why Jesus would you sit down uh, with the tax collector? And and Jesus under you know he understood that a peaceful uh, uh, population of of uh, 
Christians, uh, you, every job, you know, and no, nobody wants to be around doctors. Nobody wants to be around lawyers until you really need one, right, Brian? And and and, and so uh, when when I, I cast the uh, with, with a few with a few exceptions, not to, not to <laughs> cast all lawyers and doctors into the bottom of the ocean. Well. Uh, Brian, do you ever, you know, if you went the rest of your life not ever having to look or talk to a lawyer, would your life be a little better off? I, to, me, to me, if I never had to use a lawyer for the rest of my life, my uh, my life would be much better off for it. I got to be careful because my mom's a paralegal and works for some fine, <laughs> some fine, some fine people at law office. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just stay mum on that one. Well, okay, that? so so once again though, when you need one, it becomes the most important person in your world. When something really bad happens and you need a lawyer. You need someone that has that that uh, understanding of the law to pr help protect you. It becomes vitally important. So it's, it's not that the lawyers and doctors are not needed, but if they stay out of your life, an apple a day t uh, keeps the doctor away. Seems you know that's kind of my philosophy, Brian. Same thing with with other professions. But when it comes to central bankers, not necessary at all, at all. And and there's all these excuses that the. Uh, the Wall Street bankers and the uh, the government into you know the government's uh, officials that we so supposedly elect, why they say that we need to have someone uh, a system in place to, to control and, and and deal with that? No, it's not necessary. And look how big the government is. If central banking was eliminated, there would be some department of the treasury subset that could handle the largeness of the economy and take care of financial means through it through our constitution, Brian, through our our own United States Treasury, right? So it's kind of like the man behind the curtain that says, don't worry, I'm very necessary. Don't worry about why for the central bankers, right? That's right. Hey, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit about the evils of central banking when we return. Welcome back. Patriot Radio News Hour on a Friday. Your fill-in host, Jason, and this is Brian, coming at you from Colorado, wherever you may be listening, Arizona, Colorado, or, and beyond. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, our understanding is Joe will be back Monday. on Monday, good Lord willing, and... Uh, well, let's just get into what we're going to talk about, Jason. Yeah, you had mentioned Jesus uh, whipping the money changers at the temple. Uh, go, going to pray, and every, anybody goes to church, you know, you, they, uh, they pass the plate around, you throw a few dollars in, and that's what keeps the church running so that you can uh, you, you have a place to congregate. Um, Jesus saw the money changers uh, forcing the people and the poorest of the poor having to, to, uh, to, to do a, a, a half shekel, this shekel coin, this very specific coin, to, to be able to even go in to pray, it was it was a, it was a temple tax on the poorest of the poor that Jesus saw as, as completely corrupt and evil, and he uh, he told the money changers to leave my temple and to go away. And, he, and he, the one time in the Bible where, where uh, Jesus got uh, violent and angry, tipped the, you know, kicked the tables over and uh, a whip of cords and was was hitting these guys and, and forcing them to leave. Uh, I, I don't. I don't see where the something like that. Should, I, I wish Jesus would come and whip these guys today, Brian. That's, that's how I see it. Um, so you know, we had the Roman Empire, and the Roman Empire uh, converted to uh, a, a Christian society uh, right around the 300 A.D. And as the Roman Empire, uh, you know, the rise and fall of the Roman Empire, the, the Roman Empire fell apart, and then the, the, the stretch of the empire went deep into Northern Europe. Uh, when the Roman Empire fell apart, we went into the Dark Ages. Now, during the Dark Ages, you had families like the Rothschilds. Uh, by the way, if you want to know what Rothschild, Rothschild is red shield. Roth is red, and shield is you know shield. You know it's the Rothschilds. You know the Rothschilds. Uh, they were one of these uh, Jewish families, and and not all the bankers are Jewish. So I'll be I'll be uh, let's, just, let's make that claim right off the top. Uh, these central bankers are of all different shades, colors, creeds, religions. Uh, all different countries, but in during the Dark Ages, the 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 seeds of central banking were being planted. Now, throughout all early history, there are banks, bankers, and and they've always tried different forms of money. You know, gold and silver and copper coinage. That's that's honest money. It's 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 an exchange for, of goods. It's you have to have something as the money, and, and metal coinage has always been good. However, the bankers, you know, the banks tried to figure out ways to grow a community. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with, with different forms of money and different uh, ideas of what you're going to do. But when you print up a bunch of paper money, let's just say uh, early history, you got, you know, paper money's been around a long time. Somebody, somebody's gathering your, going, your gold coinage, your silver coinage, and, and putting it in the bank and then putting out, bill, em, emitting bills of credit like the Constitution. Uh, and you can go into the streets and, and uh, 
use these pieces of paper as exchange with with the banks saying that they have the uh, the money in in holding but as soon as some some bad human nature takes place in the side of the bank uh, people suddenly are wondering if they can go get there. You know, one guy can't go, go get his gold and silver, or the bank, the bank says, "I don't have enough uh, in deposit to, to, to exchange your paper notes." Uh oh, something's wrong, right? And then a bunch of people show up to get their gold and silver and find out there's nothing there. They find the banker and they put him up on a big wooden plank and hang him, and kill him. You know, and, and, and throughout history, whenever a bank became corrupt and and you know stealing, you know, one of the Ten Commandments, "Thou shalt not steal." You know, once these bankers are caught because they were putting it in their pocket and walking out the door with it, uh, and, and they would just kill them. So the bankers over the centuries started figuring out that it would be best to stay anonymous. Uh, and they didn't, t you know, it's, sometimes it's impossible to stay totally anonymous when you have kings and queens of these territories, lords. They want to know who these people are that are handling the money. But so, so you have a, you have a Christian realm, basically, the, uh, the Europe and, and some of uh, Western uh, Asia. You know, in a lot of Asia, by the way, a lot of Christians, Christianity took over. And so you had uh, the, the, these Jewish people that were put in these ghettos and these really horrible places, uh, the same way that you would see a liberal talk about how, how, uh, how, how bad the living situations for black people in America are. It's kind of the same thing. The, the Jews were this, were this uh, class of people that had to live uh, on the fringe and in, in bad places. And so they had to think of lots of ways to, to, to make ends meet. And so one of the things that the Rothschilds did and other Jewish uh, uh, people of the Dark Ages, they learned how to uh, buy and exchange collectible coins and, and then learn how to loan money out at, with interest, and, and they became bankers. Nothing wrong with uh, what the early Rothschilds and, and Jewish bankers did. It, it, it didn't hurt anybody. It was a business, and, you, and you, you start a business to make money and make life prosperous. But... As we moved further through the, the Dark Ages and then the Magna Carta was written, uh, England, this little tiny island nation, became the most powerful nation on earth. But why is this? Well, they, they, they took a, a horrible situation. The Dark Ages, economically bankrupt people. You had peasants and lords. There was no in-between, no business class, no middle class. The Magna Carta suddenly freed citizens of that country and the regions around, and 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 and, and people became prosperous. Yeah, you could own a business. You can become middle class. You can build a future. You can give it to your kids. Well, this is where things started to change with the bankers. Uh, the Rothschilds being one of the main ones, there, there are more than them, but they're the, they're the biggest and easiest example. They started understanding that with any business, there's risk. With, with any uh, enterprise, there's going to be risk. And with banking, you, you loan money out at interest. And you collect the interest, and that's how you make your money because you have assets and money that somebody else needs. They borrow the money to uh, make their situation better, give you payments at interest. And, and over, the, over the course of time, you, you become a part of the community like any business, and everyone's happy. But the risk is that someone dies. Uh, someone goes bankrupt. They, uh, they can't make their payments, and, and, they, and when they go bankrupt, you can't collect your payments, and you're out that money. And so for bankers, that's, that's a difficult thing. But with any business, you have good and bad. Well, the Rothschilds were one of the early families that figured out, well, what if the government, what if the government, we, we, let's, let's get them into debt. And, and, and the first thing they had to figure out was, well, governments don't really have to go into debt because they make the money. So they had to figure out how to convince governments to borrow money from their banks and, it, and, and, and some of these bankers were very rich. They had a lot of gold and silver. They had a lot of assets. So, so they could loan a bunch of money, let's just say, to the king of England. And so they had to come up with, you know, schemes. And as, as they got their, their, slowly but surely got their fingers into these governments of the world, they ended up controlling these governments because, uh, let's say, the Rothschilds said, "Hey, hey, you know, hey, England, the, the French are saying bad things about you over here. I know you better pay attention." And then they, they go to the King of France, "Hey, France, you know, I think England's getting ready to gear up for against you. You better, you better watch out, you know." And then, and then, and, and then, what's the first thing they do is like, "Hey, we, need, I don't have enough troops, and, and if I spend all of the gold out of the treasury of the king in my my kingdom, I, I, I won't be able to buy more ships to attack the French." And so, uh, the bankers who would be conveniently on both sides would loan money to the government. Now, the good thing about a government loan for the central bankers are is it always gets paid. As long as that country exists, the government will tax its citizens. 
and give it to the banks. It's a leech. You know, that's, that's what the central banking is. It's a blood sucking leech. So let's go to the, to where America beca uh, began. And we have this, this understanding of America, Brian, you've, you've heard a lot of this before. Uh, we weren't really escaping King George. That's what we're told in our history books. It's wrong. We were escaping the, the Bank of England, the mother bank, the Rothschilds, biggest and brightest star in their central banking system. You know, the Rothschilds, there was Amschel, and he had a son, uh, Nathan, and then Nathan had five sons, and they sent their five sons all throughout uh, Europe to set up franchises, and they stayed very, you know, they stayed very, you know, arm in arm, linked together. They didn't, you know, they, they made sure that their, their enterprises were all growing together. And... Uh, so, so when uh, you had these, these, you know, suddenly we find the new world, and people are finding freedom in this new place. You go, go make your own life, go make your own heritage, your, your family lineage, and these people were were just fleeing Europe and this banking. This, you know, they, they were twelve hundred. You had Magna Carta, but by the fifteen sixteen hundreds, going into the seventeen hundreds, this this slavery system and a gold only money system, which was, was strangling people. That was one of the tricks that the, the bankers used was to go to a gold only money system, which you can't do that. You have to have silver and copper coinage. Uh, you know, suddenly uh, they went from, from freeing the people to uh, enslaving the people again through a central banking system and this new world freed people. But because these colonies were set up by the bankers money and, and the king's money, they were there were colonies uh, and taxes were laid upon the feet of these colonists here they are doing all the work blood sweat and tears brian i can see you as an early colonist you know being where you live now currently and and, and how you live your life i could see how frustrated you'd be raising cattle and and mining some hills and, and having you know doing all the work to grow uh, grow you and your family and have the uh, dragon hay out dragon hay out in the snow in the dark to, right to keep the animals alive yeah and then here comes this guy in a very expensive suit that says give me it give me it give me all you can all that i all that i need because the king and his bankers need it right yeah. <laughs> horrible horrible so so the colonies are like what do we what do we need these guys for we're doing all the work we're self-sufficient we don't need them you know, the, you know, the, the Pennsylvania was 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 uh, famous. They they uh, they made the colonial script. It was a paper money system, at no interest to a bank, because they would they wouldn't let the colonists have gold and silver coinage, no coinage. And if you have no coinage, and and they come to collect the taxes, they say, well, since you have no coins, that's okay. I'll take half your field. But this is why the, the 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 war for independence happened. It had nothing to do with uh, taxation without representation. The taxes that the colonists paid. Is far less as a percentage than we pay today. We are we are more tyrannically ruled than the colonists. It's just that we're not building something, you know. So we're, we're a little more comfortable. We got our football game and our beer, right, Brian? So we we don't really need a revolution right now, do we? Too many distractions, and like you just said, a little too comfortable. So the entire history of America is has been a battle with these bankers. The whole history of it, we got away from them. Okay, and and. One of the things you got to think about is, is, as well, uh, if we got away from them, then they were they were done. Well, no, because uh, uh, General Washington, who became president, George Washington, immediately started doing business with England, which is fine, but they're the enemy. Why are we doing business with them? You know, the bankers, you know, constantly are trying to put their fingers in uh, where there's where there's a lot of assets and money to be to be found. They want all of it. So uh, we, we started doing business with England. And uh, slowly but surely, they, 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 they get their fingers back in our pockets, which is what, what do they do? They, they got a central bank. In 1791, right after the Constitution was ratified, they got a central bank, the, the first bank in the United States, with a 20-year charter. And from 1791 to 1811, we had an economy that sucked because we were paying interest on our money to these bankers. And by 1811, there was going to be a vote to renew the charter for another 20 years. And the people and the newspapers of the time hated this thing. And railed against it and uh the bankers the rothschilds and such they said look if you do not reach renew this charter there will be a war and by one vote by one vote they got rid of the, the the charter they got rid of the central bank if you ever wonder why it was the war of 1812 that was the year that we got rid of the central bank and so the the british attacked in 1812 or uh, the war of 1812 because the cent the central bank said uh, King of England, go get them. 
you know, if you ever wonder why it wasn't 1799 or 1805, it was the War of 1812 because we got rid of their central bank. And what was the goal of this war? You know, we, we won the we won the, the we won the war of independence. Did we really? We got a central bank. Did we win the war of eighteen twelve? That's what the books say. But did we really? No, we didn't win that war. What happened was we became indebted into this war. We 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 ran up these huge loans, you know, with the French banks and 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 uh, American banks in league with the Bank of England. And uh, what you ended up having is at the end of the war, eighteen fifteen, when we signed the uh, treaty. A brand new central bank was put into place because we have all this debt. It's precisely what the banks wanted was to, is to cause a war and collect interest on debt. So we, now we have the second bank of the United States, 20-year charter from 1816 to 1836. I'm going to cover a little bit more of this, this early American history leading to today's central bank. And when we get back, Patriot Trading Group, 800-951-0592, gold and silver. Welcome back. Second half of the Patriot Radio News Hour on this, I was going to say Fake News Friday. Not, no, that's not till this afternoon. Three o'clock. Call it Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels or whatever uh, whatever you prefer to do on your Friday beverage. Tea, coffee, hey, that works too. Your uh, substitute host, Jason and Brian here, get into some U.S. Uh, history with the focus being central banking. I like to call them central banksters. Not your, not your neighborhood uh, local bank down the street, but the central banksters that uh, none of us have really ever seen much of right jason yeah central bank is a parasite upon the people uh what they do is they uh they gain gain control of the finances of a country and then through the taxation of the citizens just uh get free money they print some garbage that's paper and uh, through taxation they, they gain the interest on the debt and spend it in ways to solidify their power even more and more every year every decade every century um, so, so yeah, and you said American history. It, it, this is, I'm, I'm kind of doing central banking history. I, I went all the way back to Jesus before the central banks were really an institution because uh, paper money wasn't as popular. There was paper money back even thousands of years. You know, we talk about the, the Chinese and things like that. But but generally, the, 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 the event of central banking really kind of went hand-in-hand hand with paper money because it was such an easy way to, uh, to, to foster such a system. So... When we left off, Brian, uh, and you've heard these stories before, but you had the second bank of the United States, an even more ruthless central bank that was put into place because of the War of 1812. Now, this is where we get to Andrew Jackson, best president we've ever had, it, it just hands down. A man of, uh, I would say, kind of average intelligence, kind of like a, a Brian, a me, or a Joe. I, I would say Andrew Jackson was very much like one of us, one of our listeners here at KHNC. Uh, humble beginnings too, right? Humble beginnings. Log cabin president, first one. Um, his his dad died when he was very young. His mom and his brother died during the war for independence, uh, and he, he he gained a very very uh, you know bitter hatred for the British. Uh, obviously, as a child, he didn't know it was bankers, but as he his, his hatred for the British grew long, he 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 had to figure out well what is what is what is powering my enemy and he figured out central banking. He figured out these guys. And during the war for independence he was a teenager. He uh he, uh, he was captured, uh imprisoned when he when he wouldn't clean the boots of a British officer, he he drew his sword and slashed at, at Andrew Jackson's face. He caught it with his hand in his face with a big, huge scar across his face. Uh, would not bow to these people. Uh, lost his family to the to, to the British, and the British were poorly and overly ruled by the central bank, the Bank of England. So he was a lawyer, he was a general, he was a senator. Uh, this guy, this guy was a true American's American. This guy wanted this country to be the greatest country ever. He believed in, in what we had here, and he wanted to protect it dearly. I mean, this guy as a senator was so uh, put off by the fact that we were doing business with the British after the uh, War for Independence that he, he, uh, he actually mentioned that we, uh, and, and, and was bringing it up in, in the Senate that we should impeach George, uh, General George Washington, President Washington. He wanted to impeach the first president for doing business with the enemy, and, be, and, and uh, he saw that as being treasonous. If only we had guys that were strongly uh, loyal to the country like that, Brian, right? Too many bags of money being passed around. Correct. Yeah, the, the 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 bankers had guys like Alexander Hamilton, one of our founding fathers, in their hip pocket. These, these are the guys that wanted central banking. It was Thomas Jefferson that uh, he wanted an, an amendment to the Constitution that that stripped from the the new federal government the power to borrow money. All the all the all the uh, government and the treasury has to do is just print it themselves. If you want to do a bad fiat currency, just print it. 
you know and and then and then the, and then the, uh, the the leaders of our country the the congress and the senate if they put us into hyperinflation obviously we'll vote new guys in but we don't have that opportunity anymore because uh we borrow the money from a central bank and and they are so powerful and rich now that they they've bought both sides of the aisle they own the democrats they own the republicans everybody in washington is owned by this banking interest or these corporatists that are in this circle and and there's there's no way out of it financially you have to get rid of the leech uh the the private company that's the federal reserve or the imf or any of these any of these banks that control your country you have to get rid of it uh when i left off on the last segment brian i was talking about the second bank of the united states well here comes andrew jackson running for president on a platform of uh hey first of all he was he was the the the, the uh the election of 1824 was stolen from him he was the number one vote getter but he didn't have more than 50 percent of the delegates and the banker controlled john quincy adams uh got uh, henry clay uh to to, uh, to get into a room a back room and and they uh they kind of gave their delegates together because to, uh, uh, john quincy adams was the number two vote getter and uh suddenly a corrupt bargain was struck and and uh, andrew jackson lost the uh, the the election of 1824 when really it was pretty obvious he was the one that should have been elected so 1828 comes we have the central bank in place he's elected and he has two terms where he fights against this system. Uh, they wanted an early recharter of the bank because they knew Andrew Jackson was going to get rid of the central bank. He was, we were going to go to a fair money system again. And they did everything they could. During the re-election year of 1832, for example, they got enough senators and congressmen to vote an early recharter for the bank because it wasn't going to be rechartered to 1836. And by that time, Andrew Jackson was going to be successful in getting rid of the bank. And so, so... They passed it. They got enough votes to pass a early recharter, and they put it on his desk on uh, July 4th. And between July 4th and July 10th, he vetoed it. On a re-election year, with the, with the, with the uh, you know with everything hanging the balance, he stood. It was like, look, uh, you tell me that if I annul the charter of the bank and withdraw all of the deposits, that I will ruin 10,000 families. But that is your sin. If I allow you to, to do what you've been doing, you will bankrupt 50,000 families, and that would be my sin. You are, a, uh, you are a pit of vipers and thieves, and I will rout you out, and by the eternal God, I will rout you out. And he did, he did it. He, he, he uh, took all the deposits out of the bank. Uh, he, uh, he gave it to the, what they call pet banks, state banks, and, and put all the money in these state banks. Uh, he had so much money coming in. To, you know, there was no federal income tax. No federal income tax. Listen to what this president did. No federal income tax. There was a debt. You know, we, we were the, the, the country was now in debt because we had a central bank. He paid off the national debt during his terms. Had had excesses of monies, which he divided amongst the uh, the existing states. Gave the excesses of money equally to the states, and this was all because of tariffs, goods and services coming in and out of the United States, and westward land movement. Not a single dollar of federal income tax only president to pay off the national debt that is what a free money system does that's what a, how, how, a, how strong a country can grow if you don't have a blood-sucking central bank uh and if we go a little further the, the, the quintessential the quintessential middleman right i mean planted but, right firmly firmly to 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 be profiting off of what, what they ought not to be yeah i would say even i mean the the middleman from hell basically <laughs> i mean this is this is the middle man that says uh, okay, you're giving me $100. I will take 99 and give you one. Okay, now you're going to give me $100 to give to the other guy. I'll take 99 to that and give the other guy a buck, right? So, uh, I'll cut our deal. I'll, I'll wrap this up. I'll wrap up the uh, from the from the 18 uh, from the 1830s Andrew Jackson. We'll, we'll wrap up the Civil War, the creation of the Federal Reserve, and where we're at today on the next segment. Stay tuned. This is the Patriot Trading News Hour. Welcome back, Patriot Radio News Hour on a Friday. July 30th, final Friday of the month. Jason, your host, Jason and Brian here. Hope everyone's uh, enjoying the, uh, the central banking history with uh, American Colonies Focus. Jason? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it, I like to do this uh, a show like this uh, regularly. I usually do it on the Colorado Front Range News Hour, but once in a while we get this opportunity to be on Joe's show. And since it's a... Uh, uh, we're just, you know, we're, we're light, we're light, uh, personnel here at the radio station is, is a little light. I'm having to do extra jobs uh, over there at, uh, at the home base in Arizona. Uh, Arlene just went on, on, uh, on vacation and Brittany's there by herself. 
I didn't get any really good gold specials offered to me, so we, we will still buy and sell gold and silver. I'm going to call you guys in from some of the specials yesterday and get you in for your stuff, but we will sell gold day or night. Uh, call the number 800-951-0592. We'll get you set up. And uh, that's that's that. So let let me go. We, we were finished with Andrew Jackson. Uh, there's there's a whole lot more, but I, I think I could squeeze it in uh, in this, this segment here. What happened uh, with these bankers? They're not, if anything, they're not. They're just they're tenacious individuals. Uh, they, once they figured out, you know, when, once you figure out a way to really become mega wealthy, and you have a, you have your blueprint, uh, the the American government was the crown jewel of the world. The Russians, for example, the Czars saw America as this. It was it was it was a, it was such an experiment. You have cultures from all over the world building this brand new country out of nothing. You know, of course, there was Native American, there was Indians here, but uh, other than that, there was no civilized society here. And people from different countries, all over these, all these countries had all their generations upon generations of of hatred for each other and wars and problems and. Uh, here was this new fertile land, uh, and, and, and Russia actually had a very uh, integral part of the Civil War. The Civil War was another banker-created situation, the North versus the South, and uh, the bankers that were mostly in the northern part of America were trying to steal the assets of the, uh, the crop farmers, and, and there was slavery in America. And, uh, so there, there was all these issues. It was a hotbed. Uh, but by the way, Andrew Jackson stopped a potential civil war back in his time. And what Abraham Lincoln was able to do uh, with the help of uh, Russia, by the way, was they, the, the civil war was very likely going to turn into a world war. It was it was it was getting ready to happen. And uh, there was there was English in, in Canada. There was the French uh, putting armies in 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 Mexico waiting for this country to tear itself to, to pieces and, and, and then the, the recolonization and the, the re-controlling of these territories. Hey, if we can't have a central bank as Andrew Jackson took it, let's just get, let's just get recolonized by the British and the French and we'll just take it. And that was the idea. And, was, and what, a be what better way to, to gain control than let this country tear itself apart? And Abraham Lincoln saw this. And he knew what Andrew Jackson did, and uh, he he had to break constitutional rules to keep the country together. Because if if the country breaks into pieces, there would be no America. So okay, I'm gonna you know if you're a state in the United States, you're you're constitutionally you can leave the union. But he saw the powers that be, so he went to the banks of America. He's like, I need a loan. We're gonna keep this country one piece. And the American banks, which were in league with the Bank of England, said, Hey, 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 we'll give you 37 percent interest. So he knew at the end of this civil war, there would be a central bank controlling this country again. So he was depressed and he was heartbroken that there, there wasn't uh, as much uh, loyalty from the, our bankers. And uh, he started, he got together with his treasury secretaries, like, what can we do? Let, he said, they figured out, let's just do colonial script. It was working until the English floated counterfeit script across the ocean and, and destroyed colonial script, which is what Benjamin Franklin in Pennsylvania was doing. So he started printing the greenback. The greenback was interest, uh, non-interest bearing paper money that he paid his troops with. He was able to feed them and clothe them and, and, and keep them uh, armed. And the, the North won the, the war handily and kept the bankers out. And this, and this, this money, this, this, this greenback interest-free money was so popular by the, uh, the, uh, the American public, they were making songs about it. When Abraham Lincoln was reelected as the war was won, Bang, bang, he was dead. And by the way, the first, the first president ever attempted to be assassinated was Andrew Jackson. Got rid of the banks. They tried killing him. Abraham Lincoln against the banking system. They killed him. Uh, James Garfield, another president in 18, uh, ran for president in 1880, won the presidency. Uh, he was actually running for president, but he ended up winning the presidency. Bang, bang, they killed him because he wanted to, you know, in speeches, he talked about doing what Abraham Lincoln and Andrew Jackson had done to keep, keep us free from bankers. And so this was this 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 was the the back and forth the the bankrupting of America uh, causing depressions you know trying to trying to create boom and bust cycles through a, a tight knit group of bankers in this you know they didn't have a central bank but they thirsted for it constantly. By the time you get to the late eighteen hundreds, now you had a Abraham Lincoln kept the bankers away, uh, Andrew Jackson kept the bankers away, uh, James Garfield, although he was president for five months, kept the bankers away. And so by bankrupting America and causing uh, uh, market tumbles as, as best they could, 
by the early 1900s, they, uh, they, they were able to, in the dark of night, have a Jekyll Island meeting in 1910. Uh, the sinking of the Titanic was 1912. The, the, the richest men against central banking in America died on that ship. In 1913, they passed federal income tax laws. They passed the Federal Reserve Act, creating a new central bank for this country. Uh, in 1914, World War I starts. Let's make the entire world indebted very quickly. And from 1913 to 1933, and in one generation, they had caused one world war, a depression in this country, in the world. They were pre already prepared in stoking uh, the, the flames of war again for World War II. By 1933, it was all it was all in place, Brian. The whole thing was was concocted and controlled. And uh, if, if you just here's one simple fact: all wars in American history were domestic wars until 1913. And since the central bank has been in this country and been in control for this last hundred years. All wars have been foreign wars, right, Brian? Yeah, it's reminded me of uh, uh, Major was it Major General Smedley Butler? That's correct. Uh, that talked about talked about how how the military uh, was used, and he came to that realization. And I think even other uh, presidents after that had acknowledged it, uh, maybe secretly or not publicly, as to what central banking has done. Stay tuned. One more segment. We'll be right back. Final segment, Patriot Radio News Hour. Boy, that's a heavy topic laden. <laughs> song going in for a Friday, but uh, continue, Jason. Yeah, lo love uh, love the strength that little tune there. You know, uh, it's, somebody's got to say these things, right? Somebody's got to say it. You know, the emperor has no clothes. Or what can you imagine the the the, uh, the the strength of that child in the midst of a whole kingdom of people that will not say what's right in front of their face? That uh, uh, the the king is walking around naked. You know, I mean, it doesn't it feel like that's where we're at today? Kind of, it's kind of the 1984 novel slash movie thing, right? Where, you no, know, they, they, they want you to, they want you to see what they tell you that you're supposed to be seeing and understanding, not, not what your eyes and ears actually, actually receive and yeah. perceive. Don't trust yourself. Trust your government that controls you. Yep. What, what are those, what are those fearful words? I'm with the government and I'm, and I'm here to help. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, just to put a little uh, exclamation point, central banking, let's just go with the Federal Reserve. As I said before uh, the, uh, the break there, all foreign wars have happened since 1913. All wars uh, for America were domestic wars before that. But let's let's just look at a little laundry list of all the things that uh, central banking has brought us, and they are, a, they are an integral, very serious part of all these things. Stock market crash in 1920, the stock market crash in 1929, the Great Depression, World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the petrodollar, the war on drugs, the war on terror, 9-11, the coronavirus scam. Uh, you, you've got, uh, uh, I mean, it just, it, it goes on and on, but it just continues to go on and on, you know, the war, the, the the, uh, the Gulf War, the second Gulf War, the war, you know, all, all of this stuff, all of it, none of this would exist without, without uh, if, we, if, we, if we had no central bank. No central bank means no, well, maybe we should just stop, you know, we should just stop having these wars. It seems like we have to have a war on something so that people are afraid and they're like, okay, well, we're having an emergency. Let's just do what the powers that be want us to do. And they always have to concoct an emergency, Brian. And this is how it's easy for me to predict that emergencies are coming because they have to have that, you know, uh, magic is a uh, sleight of hand. The hand is faster than the eye, right? And uh, they always got one hand hidden behind their back. You don't see what's going on, Brian. Yeah, that's true. I, I've been kind of scanning over this uh, Zero Hedge article about fiat money economies are built on lies. And it, uh, it goes on to talk about we're living in an age of fiat currencies, a world in which basically everything bears their fingerprints. And it goes into the, 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 the different fiat currencies, not just the, the U.S., uh, fraudulent reserve note talks about the euro, the Chinese renminbi, the Japanese yen. Every uh, every the, every industrialized nation on earth has a central bank. It is a cartel, and they all work in in unison. And it's the same families that run and own all of them, Brian. Yeah, and this is one, one statement here. However, the truth is that all these fiat currencies suffer from severe economic and ethical flaws, which are actually not difficult to understand. They just do a good job at keeping them hidden from us. Absolutely. Hey, gold and silver, call the number 800 951 It's why I got into gold and silver. These are truths, and uh, 
we'll talk more and more as the days uh, go on about why you own this stuff and other ways to uh, protect yourself from the world around us. <laughs>